everybody. It is super exciting to have you here for our first regional gathering of this spring. Uh, this is the Central West Virginia Regional Gathering, so hopefully you all are in the right place. Uh, as a former teacher, I always say if not, just smile and nod and after this class you can leave. Uh, so it is so great to see you all. I know that here in Weston, which is where I'm located, it is snowing right now. Uh, and I've heard it's snowing in Buchanan and Charleston as well. So uh, I just said this is the perfect day to plan community projects because we can't be out working on them. Um, but with that being said, I'm, I'm excited to get started today and uh, talk to y'all about what we're here for. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do just to give everybody a quick intro is show y'all what we hope to do today. So this is a brief agenda that we have um, for the day. So I'm saying hello right now. Uh, and then we're gonna, in just a second, hop into a breakout room and answer a question. So we're gonna be doing some breakout rooms today that you'll hop in and out of, uh, which allows you to meet new folks and brainstorm opportunities. So we'll be using that a lot today. Uh, then you'll hear a little bit more from Try This. So what is Try This? What are our mini grants this year, uh, which just opened on Monday. So that's super exciting. And then Laura Anderson, our awesome AmeriCorps who helped organize this event and has been a phenomenal powerhouse in Central West Virginia already. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some uh, projects that she's been working on. Uh, we'll get to stretch and move a little bit, which is lots of fun. And then we're going to hear shout outs from a few of our projects that are listed here. So we'll hear from the Buchanan Community Garden, Upshur County Trails, the Kelly Miller Community Center up in Harrison County, and the Doddridge County Farmers Market. Then we'll hear a little bit more from them. You'll get to pick uh, who you want to hear a little bit more from and go into a breakout room and get a little more detail. Um, then after another activity break, we'll get into the 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 big news, which is brainstorming real projects that you might turn into a, a mini grant application for Try This. So all of this to say, we're super excited that you're here today and we're really excited um, to hear from you all. And that's what I'd like to emphasize that this is a regional gathering for you, for all of us to share and network and learn from one another. This isn't about Try This um, and what we've done, it's about community projects that we want to see started to help you all brainstorm, to uh, share information and things we've learned along the way so that we don't all have to reinvent the wheel when we're trying to make our communities healthier. Um, so with that being said, what I'm going to do now, and I practiced this, so hopefully it works, uh, is to create a couple breakout rooms where you all will be sent in with one other person and that you will be able to uh, meet them and answer our question. So our big question is, what are you most excited about being on this call here today for? So what's the most exciting thing you wanna do or learn or, or teach yourself in this, uh, in this regional gathering? So with that being said, you should automatically be asked to move into a breakout room in three, two, one. Maybe. Mel, you don't have to join if you don't. Oh.
Tucker. Oh, you. My friend in my breakout room either isn't able to talk to me or something because I asked a couple of times and it's a. Oh. Yeah. Let me send her a message then. It's okay. I'll well, just... I want to make sure she can do that in the future because she's going to oh, be okay. doing more of those. So. Oh, I should have missed you. It's so good to see you. Hi. I love your hair. It looks really cute. You got it cut. I know. I'm about to get mine cut the same way. <laughs> Better do something funky, maybe get a mohawk. Funky comedina. Oh, there's Anita. It looks like it says she's still connecting to her audio. So let me see if I can send her a private message. Hey, Anita, can you hear us? You are on mute right now. Let me see if I can prompt you off. Maybe something popped up for you, Anita, that lets you unmute yourself. Yes, I wasn't expecting to have to do audio. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. Well, this was your your pal Barb. She's pretty cool. I know her, so you were lucky. And, and I, was sorry, trying you know. to use, I, I was trying to use my Kindle in case I have to walk around the house. And oh, <laughs> that's okay. I understand. So, uh, I didn't know how to do it on the Kindle. It's so tricky. <laughs> I'm currently on this Zoom call and prepping for a presentation, a virtual presentation I have at 11. So, oh, okay. Lord only knows if that's gonna happen or if I'm gonna crash my computer. So what are you looking forward to, Anita? Oh, I just wanna see what everybody else is doing. Me I'm, too. Friends, <laughs> I'm friends with Bucky and I've been to a couple of the conferences and I miss going and, uh, you know, uh, we're working on a little Canal River Trail here, so I thought the trail one might be interesting, even though it's a hiking trail. So, awesome! All right, well, I think we got almost everybody back now from the breakout rooms. Uh, can I get a show of hands? How many people was that your first time in a in a Zoom breakout room? Anybody? Rachel, yeah, Laura. <laughs> Those Buchanan people need to have a little more fun, you know. Uh, well, we're going to be doing that a couple more times today. Uh, we'll be doing that at least two more times for you to meet another person, but we'll also be utilizing those breakout rooms a little bit later where, you'll, where you will get to choose a breakout room you want to go into. So this has been a good test of the breakout room uh, machine to make sure it worked correctly. Um, so was there a lot of excitement? In general, excited to see what's going on. Me too. Uh, I do want to take one moment to say that there is a tree. The power company is taking down a big dead tree in my front yard right now without letting me know <laughs> that is right over a power line. So if something crazy happens, Laura Anderson, our awesome AmeriCorps, it should default to her. So um, she will take over from there. But just to let you know that if I suddenly disappear, uh, that is why. Anyways, I wanted to share a little bit about uh, what Try This is and why we're here today uh, and why we're so excited about hosting these regional gatherings and, and bringing you all together. Uh, so Try This West Virginia is a nonprofit that is focused on improving access to physical activity and healthy eating. Try This uh, has been around since 2014 and Kate Long, who is on the call with Kate, a lot of you probably know Kate. She uh, is the reason Try This exists, she helped uh, to, to found it and has been my amazing mentor as I've uh, come into this role. I've only been executive director since September. Um, and so uh, Try This has awarded 347 mini grant projects since 2014. So we have, uh, we're in 50 out of 55 counties. Um, so we have a lot of reach across the state. Regional gatherings have been held before by Try This West Virginia, uh, especially in the Mid Ohio Valley and Northern Panhandle, there have been several. Um, and so we wanted to be able to bring a piece of that here online uh, 
since the pandemic has prevented us from meeting in person. So uh, a lot of you probably know, especially because it's held at Wesleyan and Buchanan, that the Try This conference has been a big part of our organization for a long time. It's really fun. Uh, we get to do shout outs here about all the good things that are happening. And so we're taking pieces of that in here to our regional gathering virtually today to try to capture a little bit of that magic. Um, and so Try This uh, wants to build these regional networks to more deeply serve these regions. So we feel that regions probably have a little bit more in common. Uh, there's potential for cross-county collaboration and having projects that expand beyond county lines. And so that's why we wanted to bring you here together. Sometimes it feels that counties work in isolation. Um, I know my Upshur County friends, I used to teach over there, but I live in Lewis County. There's a little bit of a, a rivalry that goes on between us, uh, our counties. And so uh, I think it's fun for uh, projects like this where we can actually find what we have in common and work towards the greater good uh, in making our communities healthier and happier. Um, so with that being said, I did wanna share a little bit about our Try This West Virginia mini grants. So we have mini grants with Try This that uh, we have a cycle every June um, where we award mini grants up to $3,000 for healthy community projects. And a lot of you have probably already gotten to try this mini grant or know what they're about, but I wanted to share our awesome new website that we have uh, that we're currently building, but our mini grant info is on that website right now. Um, so this is our website, try this bv.org slash mini grants. You can find a bunch of information here. And I will say that uh, Kate and Laura, who are on this call, are the reason that this website exists. Um, so yay for them because it looks lovely. So this website is awesome for two reasons. One, you can go through here and learn what mini grants are, what they can help you do, what we do and do not fund, and basically a, a, a rundown of what you need to get started with something like this. Um, so these Try This Mini Grants opened on Monday and they'll be due on June 17th. And I wanna let you know that uh, right now we're planning a webinar for next Friday, hopefully, and you all will get information on that when all of that is finalized uh, to be able to uh, ask actual questions about how to apply or ask details about the application or, you know, what does it look like if I have a team like this, is this good enough or something like that? Um, so that's a, a real live opportunity for you to ask questions and get feedback um, on your application. There's also opportunity to email us. Uh, Laura, if you wouldn't mind dropping my email in the chat, if you contact director at trythiswv.com, you can set up a time to talk to me directly and get a, a mini grant consultation where we can go over your specific project in detail um, and see if there's any way, any advice we have for improving your application. Uh, all of this is to also say that None of this is a guarantee that you're gonna get a mini grant or that this is, uh, you know, we have a limited amount of funding we can offer for mini grants. So, um, but it is to say that the more you communicate with us and we are able to uh, talk you through applications, it definitely does help when you apply um, because you know more about what this means and what we're looking for. Uh, right here is a great picture. Uh, this is the uh, apple orchard in Barber County. I was actually just at Ada Land Mansion on Saturday and got to see them uh, planting the apple orchard that they were testing the soil for right here. So it's really beautiful to see different parts of this um, happen. And right here, each of these shows you all of the mini grants that happened in those years. So I will click one 2016, 2017 mini grant cycle. Here is a list by county of all of the mini grant projects that were granted that year. So Central West Virginia, we had uh, a Grow Appalachia grant. So that shows you that these counties, Calhoun, Clay, Gilmer, Roan, Webster, were, they were uh, involved in this. Um, and then, uh, you know, Gilmer County had an elementary school playground. Harrison County had Get On It, Harrison Rail Trails. So you can see through this, that um, there are a lot of different mini grant projects that have happened. And it's also a great way for you to be able to see something you might wanna have in your community. Um, so with that, I will stop sharing. And just to let you know that those mini grants are uh, uh, going to be 
granted in June. The deadline is June 17th. Uh, and we'll be con we'll continue to post more about that on our Facebook group um, and send out emails letting you know about that. So uh, all that to say, we're going to be uh, we're going to be brainstorming projects right here on this call that you may want to apply for a mini grant for. So uh, all that to say, don't you want some money? That's that's the hook. So with that, I would love to pass it over to Laura Anderson, our fantastic AmeriCorps who lives here in Weston with me and uh, let her speak a little bit about Central West Virginia since she's been doing so much work specifically in this region uh, and share a little bit about our inventory project, which Laura has also been pivotal in un unveiling. So go ahead, Laura. Um, hi everyone, I'm Laura Anderson. I am uh pretty much born and raised in central West Virginia. So I've seen the ups and downs and uh, the growth that has happened in central West Virginia. And it's been amazing, especially over the last few years to see uh, the community involvement and how these communities are coming together. And I have seen some um, collaboration between different counties um, over the last couple of months, you know, reaching out to all of the uh, different community members and organizations. It's been really neat to see how uh, people want to know what other communities are doing, what other counties are doing, and how they can tie these projects together to um, make West Virginia a healthier state. You know, it's all about just coming together and, um, you know, wanting to make West Virginia better uh, and healthier. So, and I am an AmeriCorps. Uh, I, I started with Try This West Virginia last, um, last fall with Brittany, actually. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience. This is my first time um, really being involved in a nonprofit and it has completely changed my outlook on life. Um, you know, I, I want to continue on this road uh, with Try This. I love it. I love the people, the organizations, and the people that we've met. These mini grants are, uh, the projects have been inspiring, um, going through and, and creating, or well, helping create these websites. Uh, you know, I've really got to dig into all the different projects that have gone on throughout the state. And it's inspiring. So that's one of the biggest reasons that I'm excited about this uh, this Zoom con conference because, like, we all get to hear about all these exciting things and all of our ideas. So that's big. Um, and then another thing that we've been working on, uh, all the AmeriCorps uh, have been compiling a list of physical activity opportunities throughout the state. Um, and it can help like with doctors, nurses, and other health healthcare professionals to refer people to alternative uh, options instead of just running to medicine or medication as an option, like really digging down to the grassroots of it all. And, you know, physical activity is the key. Um, getting out and moving is going to be key to being healthier. Um, a great thing about this project is we're going to be able to share it with everybody. Like everyone can have access to this. And I've done a breakdown of different, uh, the different regions throughout the state that, so that way everybody can have an idea of what they have. We also need your help because we're going to be sending out this inventory sheet um, and you can find things that aren't there. There's a lot of hidden gems in our communities, playgrounds that don't have, you know, internet or they don't have web um, presence. So those are the kind of things that we want to try to capture from the community members is trying to find all of those uh, little hidden gems. All we need is an address. We don't need, they don't have to have any kind of internet presence. We just need uh, to have an address. So that way we can direct people where they can find a cute little park or a hiking trail or you know, a soccer field or a youth organ a sports organization. So there's a lot that has gone into this. Um, and I lost my, is there anything else you wanna add about the inventory list while I try to find my inventory list, Brittany? No, I think that's it. Uh, I think uh, just, 
different ways that folks can use this is what we're excited about. So for instance, we actually have in the mid Ohio Valley, a mini grant project uh, that that is exactly along the lines of what we're doing here in inventorying all physical activity, activity opportunities in these counties. Uh, the, the Move More MOV project in the Mid-Ohio Valley uh, was born out of a need for prescribers to know, uh, you know, where they can prescribe movement to their patients. So for instance, uh, Laura and I live in Weston, but if I, you know, if I was her doctor, I might not know where she lives, right? So we wanted to, they wanted to inventory these opportunities um, to be able to give them to those prescribers because they were saying, I don't know if my patient lives in Wood County in Parkersburg. You know, I don't know if I can prescribe them you know, go to the county park and walk once a week if they live in Ritchie County. You know, it's not easy to get there. So um, they actually came up with the same idea separately from us. And so it's been really cool because their project actually built a website and is going to be able to offer these opportunities publicly for folks. So, um, you know, we, we, we started this project uh, but it's not ours in that we want to hold on to all the information. We want to share this with folks and let them use it as well. So, um, you know, after this is over, we'll be sending out some information to y'all more about mini grants that you can get, um, the inventory project and some follow-up questions. So we'll make sure that inventory project is in there. And if you see something that's not on the list, we'd love for you to let us know so we can add it in and make it more comprehensive because, um, as we've done this project, we learned, yeah, not everything's on the internet around here. <laughs> uh, you good, As, Laura? You got it? Yeah, I found it. All right. I want to show you what it looks like because Laura spent a lot of work on this. Okay. So here we have our inventory list and it is huge. We've got um, web addresses, all of the different um physical activities that are offered. And this is just, it's a huge list. It's unbelievable. But what I've done is I've kind of broken it down to um, different regions. So you'll notice that some of these counties have a lot to offer and then some of them, they really don't but I know that there's a lot more out there that is not on this list. So that's what we're really hoping um, you guys can help us add to this list and you know, just let everybody know about the things that are going on in the community. Thank you so much, Laura. That's nice um, Thank you guys all for coming. I'm like super excited to hear what everyone has to say and all of the exciting things that you have going on, your hopes for your community, your dreams for your communities. We want to make this great and try this as like, we're just kind of helping you guys out and connecting people. So that's what I'm super excited about being on this call with everyone. Yeah. And it looks like they got the tree down without taking out the power line. So we might be good. Uh, <laughs> Woohoo! Free tree removal, for me at least. Uh, so what I'd like to do next is give us all a chance to stretch a little bit. We've been sitting for about half an hour. Uh, so Try This West Virginia actually has as part of our mini grant application, something we call a good example contract. And that means that y'all are going to set a good example in your community groups and in your community in general, and that you will uh, model good, uh, healthy habits. That means if you have a community group and you're meeting, you maybe you're offering uh, a little bowl of fruit and some veggies as opposed to a box of candy. Or maybe you have a bunch of water available rather than a bunch of soda. At least giving the option for folks to make healthier choices out in public. Um, and so Another thing is making sure you're moving and stretching a little bit in your meeting. So uh, all us try this folks know that on our weekly meetings, we have lots of fun stretching and goofy activities. Um, but for this first one, we will just stretch. So let's put our arms up, take a deep breath. Ooh. And then we'll lean to the left. All of this is really fun when I get to watch these recordings later. And we'll lean to the right. 
And one more time to the middle. I like to put my hands together and flip them over, stretch them up so it stretches my wrist and my neck. Ah. I don't know about you, but just little stretches make me feel a lot better, so. All right, so this next portion I'm super excited about because you're not gonna hear a bunch from me, you're gonna hear a bunch from other people. Uh, so I wanna just say that uh, these shout outs are a really exciting part of the Try This Conference. If you've never been, uh, the Try This Conference starts out with shouting out and cheering for projects who've done a great job and have, you know, maybe uh, accomplished something big over the last year or overcome a big obstacle or we're just proud of them for what they've done. And so we are going to hear from a few folks. And I think the most important part about this is being able to see yourself in one of these people in that you're, you're a community member who maybe hasn't thought a lot about trying a community project like this. Uh, or doesn't feel that they have the skills or resources necessary to do something like this, it turns out anybody totally does with a Try This project. Anyone can make a difference in their community with a teeny tiny little mini grant and make a difference. My personal testimony to that is that uh, I moved here to West Virginia to Weston with my husband about seven years ago. And when I moved here, uh, I had never really been involved in my community before that. I moved from Columbus, Ohio, actually. So big change, Columbus to Weston. And uh, when I moved here, you know, everyone knows everybody says hi and waves. Everybody's super nice. And it was just different for me. And I, I felt kind of like I wasn't, I didn't have a place really yet here in Weston and was feeling kind of down and, and my husband invited me to a community group, Lewis County First, uh, and he said, come on, let's go. And I was like, no, sounds boring. Volunteering when I could be doing nothing? I don't want to do that. I went to this meeting and actually that good example contract I was just talking about was the very first thing they were talking about. So I was like, great, I come to this meeting and I missed the part where they were giving out candy. Now I have to eat healthy things. And then they started talking about this new community project they had coming up that weekend. They were building the start of a 24 bed community garden at the Jane Lou Park. And they were talking about needing people who knew how to use power drills. And I was like, oh yes, I can do that. I love that. So I showed up that weekend early in the morning out in Jane Lou, West Virginia and started putting together these big community garden beds. To this day, I still help manage that project. And it wasn't until years later that I, uh, that I learned that was a Try This West Virginia project. So I've really come full circle from being someone who wasn't very plugged into my community to uh, being heavily involved in volunteer opportunities. I spend my summers out doing stuff with Lewis County First all the time. Um, I'm really involved in community outreach and uh, organizing and so, I, this has truly changed my life and made me a different person and put me on a path that I love um, without even really knowing it. So empowering local leaders and grassroots change is really what Try This does. And so with that being said, we're going to hear from a few folks who maybe have a, a somewhat similar story in that they've really reshaped the way their community uh, looks because of that. So um, we are going to hear from four folks. Our first person we're gonna hear from is Buck Edwards with the Buchanan Community Garden. Then we'll hear from Rachel Garden Weber with the Upshur County Trails. Then Sherry James with the Kelly Miller Community Center in Harrison County and Jeremy Moore with the Doddridge County Farmers Market. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna let Buck go. I have a little slideshow of a few photos from the Buchanan Community Garden that I'll be showing while he speaks. Um, but Buck, if you're ready, you can go ahead and take it away. Um, thanks for the invite to come in and talk to you all. <clears throat> uh, about seven or eight years ago, um, the idea came up at Create by Cannon to build a community garden. Uh, I had seen some community gardens online, <clears throat> thought it would be a good idea. We had a few beds at a high rise uh, here in Buchanan that we had built several years ago. <clears throat> So the thing with Create by Canon is that if you bring an idea, 
then you need to bring the leadership to it. So, and our group will support you 100% if you're willing to take the leadership. So we, uh, we decided to do that and I took the role of leadership in that project. Uh, we partnered with uh, West Virginia Wesleyan on some property that they had a high tunnel uh, in previous years. But if you've dealt with high tunnels, you know that they can be a real pain. And um, so they let that high tunnel go and we replaced it with uh, uh, raised beds. Um, the other part to our community garden was that we wanted to partner with somebody so that our gardeners would get a sense of kind of giving back to the community. So <clears throat> we partnered with the uh, parish house here in town, which is a food pantry uh, type organization. And um, we didn't charge people to raise, to use one of our raised beds. But what we asked them to do was to plant a second bed and the produce from that bed would be donated to uh, the parish house. And that partnership has worked very well. And I think people enjoy that aspect of, of the gardening process. Uh, if, if you're a gardener, you know that come July and August, you're overrun with zucchini and tomatoes things like that. So it's a good outlet to be able to give uh, some of that produce away to somebody else who needs it. Um, we've raised everything for the parish house from potatoes to tomatoes to, you know, whatever, green beans. And, um, and it's, it's been something that they've really benefited from. Now, if you know anything about raised beds, you know that you're not going to raise enough stuff to sustain your family, you know, through the winter. But you're going to raise enough to um, through the summer and fall that that you can go out and pick your produce and bring it home and fix it. And and uh, to me, that's the real appeal. The other aspect of that is that you end up getting to meet people that you would never meet uh, in any other uh, situation. We've had people become uh, friends through the community garden because they see them there. Uh, they've worked together. Uh, they also have got into the vol volunteering aspect of things and they've got involved in other projects. So it's not only about growing produce, it's also about getting involved in your community and doing other things. Uh, if you notice from the pictures that are popping up there, our community garden, we take a lot of pride in how it looks. Uh, we get a lot of people coming here to look at our community garden and we've helped a few other communities get started. And uh, I'm, always, I'm really big on the eye appeal of that community garden because it's a, it's a part of our community and I want it to look attractive. Uh, about four years ago, I kind of stepped away from that community garden management uh, to a certain degree. And we now have a community garden manager and she does a great job and she has taken our garden to a whole new level uh, just because she has time and uh, the energy to do it. I was away doing other things, so I couldn't attend to the day-to-day -day, uh, needs of the community garden, but I st I'm still involved in it. And um, we're in the process now of looking to expand it. I believe we have 54 total beds now, and we're looking to move across the street and uh, construct some new beds. Uh, the demand is pretty high for, for the beds. We have a waiting list of folks wanting them. Um, we've partnered with Lowe's and um, Southern States and Highland Nursery, and they provide us, they have provided us with an outbuilding. Um, they've uh, provided us with a small garden tiller and uh, flats of vegetables that our gardeners can use to plant in the garden. 
we also work closely with the city and they provide us with equipment and manpower at times. We've also partnered with our Opportunity House, which is a halfway house in town that they provide a labor force. And we also built one at one of their uh, Opportunity Houses here in town, where the folks that uh, stay at that halfway house can raise a, can raise a garden. So we're always looking for ways to expand it. And uh, we call ourselves urban, urban farmers. Um, so <clears throat> it's, been a, it's been a real success. And uh, a lot of our success, we have to uh, thank Try This for their many grants to help us expand our garden. And we'll probably be asking for some more help later on. But uh, so it, like I said, it's, it's been a real success for Buchanan. And it, uh, you know, in, in some regards, it's become a tourist attraction for Buchanan. Because folks will come by and look at it. Any questions? Thank you so much, Buck. Hmm? Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll actually uh, give folks a chance here in a little bit to pick <laughs> to learn more about you in a breakout room and what you did. So, um, right. yeah, we'll definitely let folks ask you some more questions here in a little bit. Um, so, thank you so much, Buck. I think the thing that that Buck said that. Uh, really stuck with me is the community aspect of it, right? It's about your community, different, how many different partners did he name that have helped contribute something to the project, uh, whether it be labor or tangibles, right? That can really help you out. So I think really thinking about your community and who might be able to provide a little something uh, is always great um, because that gives you a chance to meet new folks, uh, start new partnerships and Something like a community garden is just inherently good, right? It's something positive for the community and everyone wants to be able to say that they were involved in something awesome like that. So thank you so much, Buck. Um, next up, we actually have another project in Upshur County that I'm very excited about. Uh, this project is, uh, Rachel Weber's on to talk about it. It's the Upshur County Trails. If anyone is involved in our Try This Facebook group, they might know her as the fancy photo lady because she takes the best photos of the Upshur County Trail and post them and they're stunning and I definitely spend a lot of time looking through all of them and so uh, she's going to talk a little bit about that project um, and I'm super jealous because I used to teach at Buchanan Upshur High School right where the trail is and now that I have this job I don't get to go there anymore so you win some you lose some but let's hear from Rachel about what uh, they're doing at the Upshur County Trails. So um our project this year was mainly to help enhance our trail system with the Upshur County Trails. We've actually had this trail system being developed since about 2015, and we have a very dedicated group of volunteers. However, right before we started this project, um, a lot of people were hearing about these trails and were wanting to know, where are these trails? How do we find these trails? Um, how do we get around these trails? Like, is it just two miles is a one mile we don't know how to find these trails i was getting messages multiple times a week about these trails so our project that we focused on was to enhance the trail navigation system finding the trails navigating the trails so some of the things we did um, we had directional arrows and blazes placed along the trails we added an archway and a kiosk at our main entrance to help find the trails and then um, just for the enjoyment and something that I was personally and wanted to do, I wanted to add some native wildflowers and native plants just because that was, I'm doing this project and I wanted something I enjoyed myself. So um, those were the focus of our grant this year. And I thought we had a very successful project, um, mainly because we've had a very dedicated group of volunteers, probably a core group of at least 10 people that regularly go out work on these trails and we're committed to these trails. We like to use these trails. We like to bike on them. We like to hike, trail run. Um, so these are people who are dedicated to these trails mainly because they want to enjoy the trails themselves. Um, so that was one of the keys to our success. We already had a very dedicated group of people wanting these trails. Um, then among those volunteers, we had a lot of people with certain skills that we pulled upon. Um, one was JJ Ford, who was our tech ed teacher here in Upshur County. He was able to make all of our directional signs. 
Um, another was Bruce Wallaber. He has a construction company. He made our archway and actually he donated most of the cost of that. That could have been a $2,000 or more project itself. And he donated almost everything for that. So we had a very good, you know, core volunteers who had some skills. Um, I have a biology background. Even though I focus on healthcare now, I have a very big interest in wildflowers. So I tackled that project. So those are some of the things. And then again, we didn't start from scratch with our project. We already had the dedicated sterile system of about five miles when we applied for this grant. And since then we've added about another mile and a half of trail. Um, and it also started gaining a lot of interest from the community based on this project. Um, so about what we were gathering the most questions on, let me look, I'm kind of lost where I was gonna talk. Hold on a second. Um, okay, I already talked about that, so never mind. <laughs> I was talking about like where we were getting questions about how to get on the trail and things like that. So that's kind of where we focused. Um, we've also had a lot of community support, which helped us a lot. I know Laura Meadows is on this call. She helped me like kind of direct me with our grant a little bit. I had never written a grant before. She kind of reviewed it. Um, Nathan Fetty, who's an attorney in town, he helped me review the grant just to make sure I was on the right track. Um, then we had the backing of our city, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Board of Education. Those were groups that really wanted to see us succeed. Um, the County Commission was very helpful. We even joined Parks and Rec. Um, the County Commission also, in addition, once they saw how well we were doing with this project, they wanted to help give us additional funding for things. They added a gravel parking area. They helped pay for a second kiosk and they added a picnic area. And then last night I heard we were maybe getting some more gravel for more parking. Um, the last little thing um, I wanted to say about our success was self-promotion. Like I like to promote these trails. I like to uh, talk about it on Facebook. We have an Upshur County Trails Facebook site. So here's self-promotion. Go find Upshur County Trails on Facebook. You'll see what's going on. Um, we've had my Buchanan newspaper, online newspaper, the Record Delta do several stories about us. Um, we like to brag on ourselves. I like to brag on ourselves. I don't know if anybody else does, but I like to brag on ourselves and um, tell us what's going on. It also tells you about volunteer days on our Facebook group. We've had some volunteer days where we get the community involved. Last year, we kind of held off on a few of those because of COVID precautions, but I think we'll have some this year. We're outside helping build trails or picking up litter or doing different things. Um, so just really, we want to put ourselves out there. We've, the last few times I've been at the Upshur County Trails, we've noticed people from different places and we'll talk to them. We've had a guy and his wife from Michigan there a few weeks ago we talked to, they were biking. We asked them how they found us and they said that it was a recommended route on um, some kind of bicycle app. So that was pretty exciting. So again, like Buck said about the community gardens, we're becoming a tourist destination for bicyclists. We've had people come from other counties, other states even to bike our trails, hike our trails. So it's pretty exciting. So I don't know if there's anything else I have to say at this moment, but we can talk about more later in the breakout rooms. <laughs> It was great, Rachel, and thanks for showing that video, Laura, of all those photos. Um, I want to hit exactly on what Rachel said about self-promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, I see a tendency, especially in nonprofits, to not brag on ourselves, um, like asking for too much or patting ourselves on the back. It tends to be a selfless group of folks who want to give, but one thing to remember is that folks want to engage with your project. They want to volunteer. They want to get involved. They want to be a piece of it. And to like walk down that trail later and be like, I planted some of those flowers that are coming up, or I put one of those little uh, rails on the side to make it easier to walk, you know, whatever it is. Um, I helped to design the the sign that's on the that says Upshur County Trails. Whatever little piece folks contribute, they own that. It's a community project and it's all of you working together towards it. So exactly what Rachel said, brag on yourselves, take photos. Um, my friend Ray Smith, who is involved with uh, Lewis County First, is on this call and we actually had we struggled to remember to take photos of our meetings specifically. 
Um, and so we put it as part of our agenda every time to take photos. And so we remind each other, take before photos at the community garden before we start working on it and after to show what we did that day and how you can be a part of it too. So absolutely, Rachel, definitely brag. Um, and I posted in the, in the uh, chat, the direct link to the Upshur County Trails Facebook group because it's awesome. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up is another super exciting project um, that I have loved to watch all iterations of this. Uh, you know, I just came on to try this in September, so I've been able to go back and read, you know, grants along the years and see where this started and where it's come. So I'm super excited to introduce Sherry James, who is with the Kelly Miller Community Center up in Harrison County. Uh, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about this amazing project. Go for it. Thank you, Laura. Um, as Laura said, I'm Sherry James. I'm the director of the Kelly Miller Community Center in Harrison County. <clears throat> Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, and uh, I would just like to start by saying a little bit about the community center and how uh, it came to pass that uh, we ended up uh, with the building. Um, it was donated to us by the uh, Harrison County Board of Education in 2017. And so for the first couple of years, we, uh, we were looking for partners. Uh, we were looking at how to get the building renovated, possibly getting, uh, uh, getting folks to uh, rent space and things like that. And by 2019, we wanted to, uh, uh, we talked, we went, myself and Erica Perry went to the board and we talked to them about what can we do to uh, make an impact on our community. So uh, we decided to uh, start the community center and some, we had a kickoff event on September 28, 2019, uh, where we showcased some of the programs that we were going to be starting. And it also gave us an offer, it was the uh, Youth Learning Center. And we were trying to uh, uh, use it to engage with parents to find out what their needs were um, and what they would like to see at the community center for the children. So it was a great event. Um, we had uh, face painting. We had our Clutchburg Hungar um, gave lessons to the children. We had our Kitty on Yoga instructor do, uh, do uh, give yoga instructions. Um, we had some STEAM activities. It was a great event. Um, and it, it piqued the interest of the community. And we were able to uh, get volunteers to that uh, original event. So since then, uh, we have. Uh, started a STEAM club, and we partnered with the Harrison County Board of Education, and we met with them monthly. We had about 20, approximately 26 kids once a month. We would go there. It's a, like a 4,000 square foot facility, and we had all kinds of activities going in addition to the ones we had at the community center. Um, we also were able to start an adult book club. Um, it's called a New Beginnings Book Club for the Adults, and uh, right now they're having virtual a virtual book club, and uh, every month they uh, feature a new book. It's, it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's fun, and it's engaging, and we have a great time. When we met in person, it was better, but we do have a great time with the virtual one. And we, um, so we also have a adult and youth fitness center. Um, the adult fitness center, we had all of the uh, equipment donated by Salem College, uh, my husband and I, alma mater, and uh, it, it, it's a very nice facility. In addition to that, through the Try This uh, grant, we were able to uh, start a youth fitness center. Uh, we're very happy that it's uh, pretty close to completion as far as the last few things we want to put in there. We'd like to get our uh, our mirrors up and we'd also like to get a, a large screen television so that we can uh, uh, look for videos, exercise videos or fun activities to get the kids moving. Um, also, in addition to that, we are partnering with the, uh, with more, uh, we are partners with more, uh, which is the Mo Monticello Onboard Revitalization Effort. And they have a community garden on Monticello Avenue and, uh, through the Try This Grant, we put together a, uh, in addition to the fitness center, they also will be having, uh, going to set up a raised bed garden, um, harvesting the, uh, the vegetables, and we will be 
find different ways to make healthy meals and snacks for the kids. Uh, we also, through the Try This Grant, uh, put together a um, family walk run club um, where we will be biking and walking. Families will be biking and walking through the community. Um, we created maps where uh, they can they have to find certain destinations and put a star or whatever they want on that. And uh, then at the end of the year, we'll have a party, uh, some kind of get together to uh, to discuss, you know, how many miles they walk or, you know, what what, uh, you know, how they feel about uh, being healthy and healthy, healthy habits and just see, you know, what kind of impact that had on the families and the children. Um, also, I'd like to discuss the partners that we've made throughout the uh, last couple of years. Um, the Board of Education, as in addition to donating the building, they also donated equipment. Um, we got uh, like desks for our steam room. We, uh, we also have a uh, computer learning center. Um, the computer learning center has um, about 12 computers. We had internet donated by CityNet for life. Um, and so the whole building is internet connected uh, through one of our board members was able to get out and get all the wiring done for us. Um, and because we were able to get a uh, computer learning center set up um, through all in-kind donations, the first two years was all volunteers and all in-kind donations. And we got the room set up, up and running, and then we applied for a grant um, by, I think it was Dominion, and uh, we were able, now we're able to buy new computers for the for the learning center. Um, and let's see. Oh, so Harrison County Literacy uh, Volunteers has offered to come in and help us with our homework help program. Um, where we have if we have students that need help with um, with uh, math or reading or anything like that, we have volunteers for that. Um, we also partnered with the Clarksburg Community Action, and we've done several community cleanup projects, um, which were very successful. Um, it was uh, Wayne, Wayne Worth, who's now running for city council in Clarksburg. Um, the United Way donated uh, for the, we also have a community kitchen that's in the process. Um, we have, uh, we have $20,000 donated uh, by United Way, we were able to purchase all of the kitchen equipment, like the refrigerator, the stove, and things like that. Um, the county commission donated twenty thousand towards the um, towards the gymnasium. That's also a work in progress. Those are our two big projects that we'd like to see uh, completed. Um, and uh, so, I guess the main thing I want to thank Travis. We would not have been able to get the uh, youth fitness center up and running without the grant, but also in the process of doing the application, it was, uh, I learned a lot um, uh, through going through all of the steps and the checklists, um, uh, going in and getting our partners. And it, it just, uh, it was a wonderful activity and I learned a lot for future grant writing. So that's, that's all I have right now. Thank you, try this, let's begin. Sherry, I just love that project. I mean, start to finish, there's so many components to it. And, uh, you know, it's stages, like what's possible at the time. It doesn't all have to happen at once. Uh, it's the proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So I think that's a prime example of that. Um, so thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. All right, last but not least, we have uh, a project that actually wasn't a try this project. This is, uh, you know, a, a, a farmer's market that we are excited to have gotten connected with um, and learn more about in Doddridge County. Doddridge County is actually one of the five counties that we don't have a project in. Um, and so we got connected with, with Jeremy Moore here with the Doddridge County Farmer's Market. And his project is a really a uh, cool example of a community who did for themselves. And so um, we wanna give Jeremy a minute to, to talk a little bit about the farmer's market and show what they're doing. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you guys. So when you said put together a slideshow, I took it very literally and put a little PowerPoint together. So let me see As if I can share As a former teacher, my... I appreciate that. <laughs> let me see it. if I can get this shared here. 
All right, can you all see my screen? Okay, good. Um, so I'm Jeremy Moore. Um, I work in the WVU Doddridge County Extension Office as their ag uh, agent, and I'm also involved with the Doddridge County Farmers Market. Uh, it's been together for, I want to say 10 years or more, but as farmers markets kind of do, it had its kind of ebb and flow life cycle where it would kind of build up and drop off. And, and so when I came in, it was on its backward up swing, so I can't really take credit for anything. I just happened to be there at the right time. Um, but Brittany said something a second ago, if you do something and people see good happening, they want to get involved. And that's kind of something I've been able to witness through this. And I kind of look at, at this wheeler, it's how I think of it, and, and the market manager. Um, if you feed one of these three things, the other two will come. It's just kind of like this cycle that you keep building on. And if you're like me, you don't like asking people for money, but it's, but it's an integral part of, of growing a program like this. Um, and in doing so, we've been able to, to offer the community a lot more programming and, and more accessibility to uh, fresh food and vegetables. So the first part I look at here at my community, um, our market manager, Crystal, has done a good job of really making the market not only a place for food, but just healthy living in general. And given kind of a spotlight to local organizations to come and put on programming for everybody. So these are just some pictures of some of the activities we've had. Um, Energy Express has came and done STEM programming with kids, uh, pollinator lessons. Um, we host a community yard sale in the summers uh, pre-COVID that kind of got people out and about and, and used to seeing the market. Uh, there's a clothing uh, consignment that sets up before school for people to donate and buy uh, school clothes for their kids. We've got local musicians. Uh, Extension also will go down. We've done Rethink Your Drink, uh, a uh, healthy alternative to sodas and you know sugar drinks. And then you can see the kids coupon here uh, and the WIC senior vouchers are some of the programs we offer uh, the community thanks to some of these mini grants we've gotten. Um, and I'll go into that with the programs here. So we've got SNAP, SNAP Stretch, WIC and senior vouchers, and, and we can now accept uh, cards. So that's been a, a great asset to us, being able to take EBT cards and as well as credit cards. It's, it's boosted our vendor sales. Um, it's made things more accessible to the community and, and more of a presence. And I, I also should add, when here having these community events has really connected a lot of our vendors with with the community and now we have some of our vendors selling um, produce and eggs to local restaurants which has been a cool uh, connection to see happen just from people being in the same place at the same time so it's really kind of become a just a hub for for local people to meet and make those connections um, as far as funding and partners we're blessed that our uh, county commission is able to fund a lot of our day-to-day -day operations. So our market manager's salary comes from there. We don't really have to worry about funding that. Um, we've got great help from Parker Community Foundation. They've given us matching funds for the SNAP Stretch program. So we were able to kind of carry that further. Uh, Food and Farm Coalition, I can't say enough about. I think Audra's on here. She uh, has provided invaluable technical support in all of this. So big shout out to her. And, and they've also given us technology grants for our iPad and card reader so that we can, you know, take those things. Uh, Farmers Market Association has been a big help with uh, marketing. They've helped with marketing and marketing materials. Um, and then our local school system, that was another great partnership that this has kind of fostered. Um, our FFA comes down and sells their, their mums in the fall and their, uh, you know, vegetable plants in the spring. Uh, they've also actually in the, the last year asked if they could have a couple students come and volunteer to work at the market. They wanted to get some um, ag business experience. So they're going to come and kind of help do some managerial duties um, and kind of offer a, a learning experience to them. And then you have some industry people here that have helped. I guess one of the, the big exciting things for us is we've grown to the point now that we've outgrown our space. So that's that's our next big adventure is um, we're actually trying to just about double the square footage of our market so that we can facilitate uh, more vendors and uh, more community groups. So that's where we're headed. And I, and I put try this in here. And as she'd mentioned a minute ago, we've not worked together yet, but I, I look forward to, uh, you know, 2021, you'll, you'll be see, you'll be hearing from Doddridge County and Doddridge County uh, farmers market. So we look forward to that. <laughs> but that's all I've got. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Uh, yeah. That is a, a great example of 
you know, community involvement and, and getting people together. I think one big thing that I saw there is, you know, a farmer's market that's is working hard to accept snap stretch or you know offer opportunities to folks who maybe need produce more than others and maybe don't have access to it i know uh audra's on this call so i'm i'm gonna be uh you know she is incredibly knowledgeable with the food and farm coalition but um you know being able to you know ensure your farmers market accepts snap stretch is something that they are passionate about because we know you know that some folks need produce more than others, that West Virginia is a big food desert community and that, you know, it takes a long time for somebody to maybe get to a, a grocery of some sort that offers uh, fresh produce. And so uh, stuff like this is, is really exciting. And uh, Jeremy, I know we will be working in the future and I know a lot of other folks are interested in collaborating in Doddridge County. So you've got a lot of people interested in seeing some success over there. So very exciting. Uh, Awesome. Well, what I'm going to do now is uh, I discovered that apparently, which in my testing of this, I did not know, um, when we do breakout rooms, once we assign breakout rooms where you're automatically assigned, it will not let me give an option where you get to pick your room. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is uh, give us a, a, a second to take a bathroom break. We've been on this call for a whole hour now. So what I'm going to do in just a second is ask y'all, Go take a break, stretch, get up, move around, get some more coffee. Um, but here I'm posting in the chat four options for breakout room. So what we're going to do after this quick break is hear more from the folks who just presented or maybe have similar interests. So uh, Buck actually had to, to leave early, but um, Ray Smith, who's with Lewis County First uh, and helps me with the community garden a lot, is going to take his spot. So we're going to have one breakout room to learn more, talk more, ask more about community gardens, one about community trails. Uh, obviously, Rachel will be on that one. Uh, one about community centers and one about community farmers markets. So like the Kelly Miller Community Center in Doddridge County Farmers Market. So what I'd like everybody to do before you run off and take a break is to type in the chat which of those four you'd like to join. Um, and so I know it's hard to pick. I know that you only you can only pick one. I can't go to any of them because I have to be out here in this big room. So I'm going to ask you pick one. Yes. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. Sorry, we had one group come back early, so we've already been chatting. Um, but what I'd love for us to be able to do now is take a deep breath. Think of all the work we've done. So you can stretch, move a second, you've done good work. You've met new people. You've shared ideas. You've brewed up some projects already. So I hear. <laughs> um. And what I would really like to do here in just a second, once everyone gets settled back in from the breakout rooms, is if you could have somebody from your group kind of report out what you talked about, what exciting things came out, you know, maybe for five minutes. And then uh, I think we'll, we'll finish up a little bit early and maybe have some time to chat as a group on, on your projects if you'd like and, and just share and be happy to be together on this cold snowy day. Um, thanks to Zoom. So, uh, which group would like to go first? Anyone feel brave and want to share what happened in your group? I'll, I'll, I'll be the test dummy. Uh, Thanks, John. <laughs> I don't feel like... Fellow teachers know exactly what that's like. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like the crash test dummy sometimes. You know, I'll just go first and, and see what hits me. Um, no, I, I was knocked out first by, by everyone's ideas. It, it's funny, we started talking about a nature trail and I found out about community centers. I found out about uh, another community center in an area like, like the one I'm at a lot that, uh, that would make a good model. Um, <laughs> you know, it just kind of grew. Um, but I think that's the, the nature of things, no pun intended, that, uh, you know, like I said in the, in the group, you and, and this is to be quite honest, a, a discussion I have because I'm technically a prevention specialist and we're, we're supposed to be developing the community coalition and all that stuff. But I, I keep saying, but we need to be out preventioning and, and developing relationships with the communities goes beyond setting up meetings. And, and we need to, to do things to get their buy-in so we know, they know that we're for serious. And 
you know, for me, starting with a nature trail at a community center that's trying to get up and running, it ticks all the boxes. It, it's helping, it gives youth an alternative. It, it you know, it, it gives the community a sense of, oh, hey, we are doing something here. And, you know, that, that, that's where it all starts at. But I, I would, like I said, I was knocked out by, by, the, by the quality of, of thinking going on. So it, it always pays to not be the smartest person in the room. And I definitely was not. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Oh, John, thank you. Um, I think that's a perfect example of like, you are like, I have this idea and someone else has a kind of idea that might fit in. And that's where, you know, you meet in a, an opportunity like this or at a community conversation or at a volunteer opportunity. And then you start talking and something comes out of it. So that's super exciting. I'm glad you got a bunch of resources and uh, uh, learned something today. That's what it's all about. All right, John, our test dummy went first. Who wants to be number two? I guess I can go next. Um, Thanks, Josh. <laughs> really, we, we just discussed uh, some uh, about my project here with a like a self-guided nature trail, identification trail. And we talked a little bit more about the possibility of doing this in other areas like Upshur County. And, you know, once mine is finished and built and I have all the information and the verbiage for the signs for tree identification, plants, animals, really that can be taken anywhere because, I mean, we all live we all have the same stuff. We have the same trees, the same animals, same plants. So, so once one is built, I mean, a lot of the information can be shared and just duplicated throughout different areas. Awesome, Josh. And I think that's, uh, I think that's really exciting uh, to hear from you because I know who you are, but you know, you're all about sharing and, and providing that to other folks. So that could be something that's shared publicly and other people can utilize. And um, it's not something you wanna, you know, hold away from folks. You wanna say, you do it too, because you know, the more folks you can get a, involved across the state, the better. I love that. Yeah, um, yeah we also talked you. a little bit about some other projects that I've done that would be good to bring to, you know, like, sorry, there's people working in the other room behind me. Uh, other projects to bring, like in uh, Upshur County in Buchanan, I did a community orchard where I petitioned the city to give me a, a FEMA lot, which if people's not really informed what that is, it's like where uh, FEMA, the federal organization came in and bought up a lot of flood zone lands um, and then gave them to either cities or counties to use for different purposes. Um, like educational, recreational, community gardens, things like that. Uh, they just have certain rules about what can and cannot be done on them. Like they can't have structures, any types of buildings or parking lots built on them. So I had one that was by where I lived the other year. So I thought it'd be really great to be a community garden. So I got the city to give me kind of roll the property. So I started fundraising and was able to purchase five apples, five pears, five peach, a slew of blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, figs, um, some uh, grapes. Uh, we have a couple of uh, grape arbors and things like that. Um, it was really simple. I mean, a lot of the the money came out of either my own pocket, donations from people or donations from people like TJ's Greenhouse or Lowe's, things like that. And it's real simple. I mean, you we're really not going to see any fruit production until like eight to 10 years after everything's planted. But it, it's kind of nice to start now for, for future generations. I think that's uh, really awesome, Josh. And just seeing that that space, I think it's such a cool, uh, you know, open opportunity. You know, a lot of folks get get held up, I think, in the, the the details and limitations. Well, if I can't build a structure on this property, what can I do with it? Well, there's a lot of stuff you can do at the property without a structure. So mm -hmm. um, I've always been impressed with the impressed with the projects you come up with, Josh, and and how creative and collaborative they always are. 
Yeah, yeah. People don't really notice that most of the the towns throughout West Virginia are littered with these types of properties because there's there's just flood zones everywhere, and those properties were bought and given to the city or counties, and usually they don't have a whole lot that you can do with them. So if you can check in with your city or county and ask for the the flood zone maps or even the FEMA lot maps, and you know come up with something. I mean, they're great for things like dog parks or community playgrounds or anything that's able to be flooded and not destroyed. So John, that's... John, do you know if there's a statewide list of those uh, properties? I don't think so because whenever they were bought up through the 80s and 90s through FEMA, then they were passed down to either the cities or counties, but each city and county should have a list of those that they own. And a lot of cities and stuff, you know, they they already use them for things like parks. That's an interesting thing, you know. I mean, if it'd be interesting to have a list of those properties. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked I on the same the, thing, Kate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went to the city of Buchanan and asked them, and they gave me a huge map of the whole city with a highlight of different properties like that that they had. Uh, whenever we built the the dog park in Buchanan. That's kind of what we started with. We were looking at uh, FEMA properties, flood zone properties. And we actually ended up landing on a property that was in the flood zone, but owned by the owned by Wesleyan. But a, a lot of those properties are, I think, in the future planning, especially in Buchanan, to be trailheads and different areas like that. Awesome, Josh. Uh, now that I think about it, I think Julia's off the call now, but. Uh, uh... We have a park, Willow Park over in, um, mm -hmm. in Weston is a similar thing, you know, no permanent structures because of flooding, but what can you do? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And it's a great little community park. Yeah. To do with it. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josh. Uh, that's awesome. Um, let me tell you, if you want to know somebody who can collaborate and get things put together uh, and manage a bunch of pieces at once, Josh Hinchman, he knows, he knows how to do it. Um, Awesome, thank you. Uh, I wonder if uh, we can hear from the folks with the, the farmer's market next, would that be possible? Well, I am the only one left. Oh, ho. <laughs> so, last but not least, Audra. Let's hear <laughs> Everybody left for my group. Anyway, uh, it was a great conversation, um, really great ideas, uh, a lot of good brainstorming and potential collaborations, which was awesome. And uh, the thing that I liked the most that spurred from it that was unintentional was addressing some uh, other issues that folks were having that kind of correlated with what I'm working on. So just through talking about it, we might be able to actually help each other solve issues. The issue has become the solution. So I think that's really awesome. I love it when that happens. Like, all right, we've looked at it from a different angle and now that problem is the solution. I love it when it happens. So I thought it went really good. I love this kind of breakout and being able to really dive deeper into issues, um, which is awesome. Um, I found it very useful. Hopefully they did as well. Um, shared some resources and whatnot and we'll continue to do so. Awesome, thank you, Audra. Uh... Audra's with Food and Farm Coalition. He's a great uh, partner of Try This and um... They know a lot about uh, healthy food and, and healthy food opportunities and where you can and can't get healthy food and how you can get more healthy food. So um, food and farm is fantastic. And I'm super excited because uh, uh, obviously being a Lewis County resident, I'm excited to see if our uh, farmer's market can come up to come up with some solutions to issues we've had. So that's very exciting. Um, I know our community will definitely benefit from that. And, uh, you know, Another thing I think about is is accessibility, right? Weston's right at exit 99. It would just be a couple, maybe two miles from the exit to be able to drive into that farmer's market, it, which is really exciting. So um, awesome. Thank you, Audra. And certainly not, last but not least, uh, we have the Weston Town Hub. Uh, this project I think is really cool because Ashley and I have uh, talked a lot about different things we could add to the project that would, um, you know, mix with try this healthy food, physical activity. What could we do? A kayak kiosk, a walking group. They're already started a walking group. Uh, so yeah, I love this. Go ahead, Ashley. 
Well, let me just say how thankful I am for this and why in the world you even were like, hey, let's do one for that. But listen, Mel gave me some really good ideas of different things that you and I can do. Well, the try that was try this West Virginia can help us do um, just little things because we got permission actually this morning from the last one. But I now have permission from multiple buildings in our downtown district for murals. So we'll be able to maybe try this can help me come up with a walking trail and maybe little things to go from one mural all the way to the next and the next and the next. just get your exercise in um that would be helpful also with our clio grant that, um, the western historic landmarks commission that i'm on we've already got the grant from the humanities council to do the walking tour but it came up when in the brainstorming about um having different things that the kids can do when they go to each one where they can actually look up historical information other than what's posted so they can actually learn some more about our community and about these different places um and then inside she helped me come up with or they everybody we all talked about the different nonprofits, and it, i mean it really got me thinking about all the ways i can use like lewis county first and other every all of our other nonprofits that we already do have while we're waiting to get ours up and running because it is just the community center. I mean, since we don't have one. So this was super informative and I cannot wait to get you in that daggone building so we can just start like you and Laura both, like let's just start listing it out because here we go. Because you know, like there's the problem. I'm a solver, let's get it done. <laughs> now kiosk for kayaks, there is somebody actually that John, is he still, yeah, he's still here. Um, John pointed somebody who, a Lewis County girl, but now lives in Bridgeport, who is starting a kayak business, a rental business, and she's been down to the town hub. She's already picked out her spot to have a kiosk there. So now we just need to continue working with the city to get them to get the river walk done. But if they won't, then at least we'll be able to, I mean, we'll we'll pay hopefully with some grants, but we'll knock off, knock off some right there by the Water Street parking lot to be able to drop in kayaks as we're still working with the dam issue with the city. But that way they can at least go from downtown down to Jackson's Mill. So that's that's gonna be important to get some kids involved in that. So I think that's what that's about it, like for me. But then even being able to meet Tim and knowing, I, I heard the name, but I didn't know who he was, but that breakout room gave me I meant to meet him and hear some more about him because we're going to be doing some suicide prevention stuff using him, whether he knew it or not. <laughs> just, just don't believe what those folks down there are saying about me. Oh, Tim, that's, uh, a, that's, that's, that's a great collection of ideas that you all came up with. Uh, it makes me think of that guy who uh, who lives near Weston, I think, who's involved with uh, uh, kayak angling. Uh, Brittany could connect you with him, Joe but Starrett? I know there's a lot of yeah, Joe Starrett, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Uh, something that's fishing. Uh, yeah, fishing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my husband immediately went and bought a kayak from Joe. Yeah, we know Joe. Uh, I think something that's super exciting about Ashley's project is she has an idea for the business side of things, right? Like we want to bring businesses in to be able to let them kind of use this as a big, not like a real co-op, but like a, a co-opted space where folks can have different businesses set up. And and she's been doing small business weekends where folks can come and, and see. And it's, it's reminds me a little of uh, Buchanan's Festival Fridays, where once a week you can come and, and sample different opportunities in the community. Um, but Ashley also doesn't just think within the business world because she's super selfless and compassionate in her community. And so she also wants to offer, you know, access to nonprofit information or like she's saying, resources for folks who might need it for mental health, maybe they're experiencing homelessness or food insecurity. And so how can we make this community space a place where you can come and spend money, but also learn how to improve your life one way or the other? Um, and so that's something that's super beautiful about this project. And uh, I'm glad Ashley's doing it and not me, because holy cow, that's a lot to to pack <laughs> into one space. Uh, but it's been thrilling to see this happen. And um, I really am excited that you, that I thought of having you do a brainstorm on this because, uh, 
that's something that can be copied. Everybody wants a community center in their community and, and you can go from small to big. You can scale that really easily. Um, it's really exciting and yeah. Um, once you see, once you see movement in a community, it's like, it's a snowball and that has, it's already starting to happen, um, in Lewis County. I've already seen that happening in Lewis County. We all, people in, in central West Virginia have watched over the last several years, watched Upshur County snowball into this tourist attraction. People want to come and see the local produce and the local like the community garden like people travel to community gardens I think it's really neat um so it's my thing hey Brittany Veronica had a good idea too that you that she may want to speak about oh Whatever. yeah Veronica I'd love to hear about that all right so um so I work with a, a church in the Northview area of Harrison County which um is kind of an impoverished community, but the church is unique in that it has a full-size gym because there used to be a, a Catholic school that's since closed down. So they have a full-size gym associated with it. And then on the other side of the church is a um, city park. So they're kind of positioned perfectly to be a community hub for different events. Um, and I'm starting small because I, I don't have a ton of people or resources right now, but I'm thinking like, where you've seen the sidewalks that are painted with different obstacle courses from kids to paint the sidewalk from the gym to the park, you know, um, for kids to play along and then take them into the park to, to play as well. Yeah. Uh, Veronica, I'll say that there is actually kind of a template for those, um, those projects. Uh, we, partnered with WVU Extension on a couple, uh, on a mini grant in Kanawha County in particular that's called uh, Active and Safely Distanced Play Places. And that's what it was. There are actually like templates you can buy online with little activities that that kids can do. Um, and it's kind of an intergenerational play thing, right? Where parents or grandparents can take their kids on a walk and they can hop and, and walk like a crab and all these cool things that I see on there. Um, so that might be worth reaching out to WVU Extension too, because they might be interested in partnering in that. Um, I told yeah. her I would connect her with Jessica so that they yeah. could have a conversation about how Jessica came up with it. Yeah. I, I think WVU Extension statewide has adopted that as a project. And yes, they have. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be a perfect opportunity where they may be interested in getting that out into other places, Veronica. So. Um, if you want to, so I don't forget, if you want to send me an email after the fact, Veronica, then, um, I can figure out who that would be for you and, and who we might want to connect with. Brittany, if you connect me in with that as well, um, there's some ladies that work at the, or that are involved with the PWA, which is the Progressive Women's Association. Um, okay. they started a community garden over in Northview and they're highly, highly active. Um, I'm sure they would love to help get that going and connect the community garden in and kind of tie everything together there um they get things done like they're hard to keep up with <laughs> yeah. and they have, they have a group of girls that have their own organization and that whole thing could really tie together for you with a, a lot of manpower and promotion i think that would be a good asset for you that's a great idea awesome. yeah audra thank you audra and and i i I've kind of thought that park would be a good setting for a community garden. I did not know that there was a community garden already in Northview. So that's awesome. We did that until the other day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I was meant to have that information for you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a perfect, up, you know, you could think about how to have uh, walkways to the garden or back and, um, I think about like where our community guard, or our, I'm sorry, our uh, farmer's market is in Lewis County and thinking about Ashley's mural walk. Like, how can we make like all of this a community that like works together um, to make it fun to get from one place to the other in a more active way? Uh, I love it. I, I'm curious, Veronica, do you work with, uh, with more than one church? Uh... I actually do. Um, 
I am a nursing faculty member at WVU and our dean, we have a faith community nursing oh. um, program there that <laughs> one of our faculty members started up. But I work with two churches and my dean actually gives me eight hours a week. Um, so I split kind of four hours with each church. And we have some great things that that particular church in Northview, we have a walking group that meets twice a week. Um, and then I also work with Immaculate Conception, which is in downtown Clarksburg. And uh, we try to offer screenings. We've done some mental health um, programs. Um, so a, a lot of different opportunities that we have. I, I'm wondering if you've run across Josh Sowards in your uh, in your travels. <laughs> I have not. Where is he? Well, located? he's in Bridge, he's in Bridgeport, and okay. and he is. Uh, I can uh, get you his contact information. He used to uh, before he became a pastor in Bridgeport. He ran a an organization called um, Healthy Bodies, Healthy Spirits, and that man is a fountain of of ideas for churches uh, on getting people active and uh, and uh, healthy food and so forth, and just a totally inspiring person to know and so i'll get his contact information and Brittany can send it to you and yet tim i know ellen well she and i worked together i taught at fairmont state before i left and taught um went to wvu and um i've known ellen she was actually my teacher in nursing school so i've known her for a long time <laughs> oh okay yeah this guy's name is josh sowards and um uh, yeah so we'll awesome. get to that information. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a, I immediately thought of that too, Kate. That's a perfect uh, connection. I haven't even met Josh yet, but he sounds, um, I've heard great things about him. He sounds like a great connection. Um, we have a couple more minutes left. If anyone wants to just, you know, if you have anything you'd like to share, hop off mute, that, that'd be great um, before we wrap up. So anybody else have anything else they'd like to throw out? I just want to throw it out there. Like even, even if you have like a small little idea, please reach out to myself or Brittany. Um, and, and we can point you in a direction pretty quick, probably, um, with somebody who's done a similar project. That's the whole thing. Um, with the website Go th if you don't, you're not really sure what direction you want to go, go through the, try this website and look through all the mini grants that have been done. Um, we've had 34 in central West Virginia and I want to see more because it's just, it's inspiring. So please reach out. Um, I know a lot of you guys personally, so feel free to send me a Facebook message or call or email, whatever, however you want to get a hold of me, please. I like to talk to you, Laura. I like to talk to you and then meet in Buchanan and have coffee and drinks outside and food outside. Wait, wait, <laughs> I, want, I want to do that too. We'll Stone that. Tower, everybody. Uh, actually everybody invited to Stone Tower. <laughs> hey, I'll say Fishhawk added um, bistro style tables and chairs um, along the side street and it's awesome. I just saw that yesterday, Laura. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were pumped. <laughs> hey, I have a question. Um, cause I'm just brainstorming for other people, not necessarily for me, you yeah, know? Laura. um, but we have a really great new yoga studio in butt cannon. And, um, I mean, she hosts classes and she has a lot of different instructors, but she also, she does like yoga in the park out at Audra. Um, so she's a private business, but I think she has a really great, um, heart for community service too, and just sharing what she loves about yoga to other people. So are there ways for her to, um, utilize, try this, um, resources? Laura, she actually, Laura, Laura what, what's her name? It's her name's it's, Sheree. Eva. Sheree. Um, she, yeah. she has come and volunteered at about four Gosh. try this conferences. Yeah. You, you bet. Uh, she just needs a, 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 a nonprofit, uh, sponsor and a team. I mean, she can't just do it on her own as, you know, the business, but her business can be part of a team. Okay. And I know her I personally. Would be great. Yeah. So I'll I, reach out to her. Really well. Okay, great. And well, and I mean, we worked with Upshur County Trails to kind of help them with the, the funding aspect. So I'm willing to do that for her as well. 
Awesome, Laura. Yeah, uh, one thing I didn't say, uh, which I meant to say in my intro, um, I skipped over it with my eyes apparently, is we actually had uh, 340, I'm sorry, 347 trainings for uh, elementary school teachers uh, since January. Um, and three of those were actually whole schools in Upshur County that got training. So uh, three elementary schools in Upshur County have that training. So uh, that type of yoga mindfulness thing might play in with that too. I know uh, if Rachel's still on that. Uh, oh, there she is. Yeah, we were talking yeah. about, you know, we had someone who reached out about down the road, maybe putting mindfulness like stops on the trail or something. You know, there's a lot of opportunity for maybe Laura, that being part of a bigger project. So I love that idea. I will send you that email that I received if I still have it, if I can find it. Someone reached out about putting areas for yoga, mindfulness along the Upshur County trails. They didn't really want, that person does, I don't think really wants to take charge of this program. So I don't know if there's someone who would be interested in that, but I feel like I don't really want to do it since I'm doing more with the trails this year. But if you think Sher Sherry would want to do it or someone else, I'll pass the information along of what they had in mind. Thank you. Welcome. Yay. Always I love welcome. this. We talked about this. She's always welcome at the um, Weston Town Hub. We can figure out a way to get her something, even on second like Saturdays or another day or, I mean, yeah, I'm all about getting whoever in. Oh yeah, John just mentioned, I forgot her hus husband has that paddleboard business. Um, that's right. Um, I love Ashley's dog too. Yeah, hi Ashley's dog. <laughs> that's all of our latest rescue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so sweet, mine are sleeping, thank goodness. Um, they were very vocally excited about the tree cutting down in the yard though. Um, all right, does anybody else have anything else before we uh, wrap up? Uh, I can kind of talk about real quick how they were talking about a kayak, like kiosks here in West. Yeah. Like around the town hub. Um, I'm on the board for the, the Buchanan Upshur Park and Recreation Advisory Board and a project that we did um, last year and the year before last is we kind of mapped out some of the, the river trails throughout Upshur County on the Buchanan River, Middle Fork River, and things like that and put up kiosks for um, boat ramps or just ins and outs and putting in distances so people know, you know, this three mile section would take you, you know, 40 minutes or so, or, you know, just so people know where some good flat water areas are for kayaking and canoeing. That's Love fantastic. Oh, sorry, Kate, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to, I'm going to put my address in the chat for you, Josh, that you could send that maybe to us. We're trying to uh, collect things like that. All right. Laura, do you still have any of the pamphlet information for that stuff that you help with that? Yeah, we have um, printed copies in our office, and then I believe we, st we have the digital file too, so I can get both. Okay. I'll, I'll email you, Laura. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would love to have something like that, Josh, too. We talked about um, once we have an area to put the kiosk in or to put the canoes in, it would be really cool if we had something, markers displayed along the river all the way to Jackson's Mill showing different historical points of things. Oh, that'd be nifty, Just yeah. you know, right here is where such and such happened and, and over here and whatever, like right over the bank, up on the hill, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I should, I should uh, put in a, a um, I'll try to find the address for, uh, the Morgantown area did a uh, an online uh, map of all their access points and canoe liveries and so forth that, that was done with GIS so that you could get Google Maps in it and you can come down and actually look at the access point so you can see if it's a slide down the river bank or a big concrete thing or whatever. Lots of ideas. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's really exciting. Um, yeah, and uh, you know I've seen that that stuff out in Buchanan, but never like it never like clicked about <laughs> what it was. 
um, until Josh and I were talking about it. So yeah, I think that's a really exciting um, model again that can be used. So uh, awesome. All right, anybody else have anything else you'd like to say? We wanna finish up by noon, so. I wanna say thank you. <laughs> I just want to say thank you as well. Well, I want to thank everyone for um, being a part of the first of hopefully many um, you know, central West Virginia try this uh, gatherings. So hopefully um, next time it can be in person, hopefully. So hopefully this fall we can plan something and get to see each other face to face outside. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to just start wrapping up here. I want to remind folks, uh, first and foremost, don't forget mini grants due June 17th. Uh, I'm going to drop my email one more time in the chat because let me tell you, the chat got real big real fast uh, <laughs> with everybody telling me, uh, you know, what room they want to be in. So my email is director at trythiswv.com. Feel free to email me if you'd like to set up a mini grant consult or talk more in depth about anything. Um, I know a handful of folks have already said they're going to email me about stuff, which is exciting. So please reach out. Uh, I can tell you on a call like this, it's likely that I may have forgotten to write down something I should have. So um, with that being said, this has been really exciting. Uh, this is this is the first of four regional gatherings we're going to be having in the next couple of weeks. Um, so y'all were the guinea pigs uh, again for that. And it has been fantastic. I've been smiling all morning to the point where my jaw hurts um, because this has been really exciting and seeing Try This Work is about as satisfying as it gets. Um, so I really hope that some stuff comes out of this and that we can continue the conversation. With that being said, we will follow up with you on a couple things. One, I'll have a couple questions about this meeting and what you thought of it in general. Um, some honest feedback would be great as we think about doing these um, in the future. Uh, and the potential for doing one in the fall. Well, I'd like to have another one in the fall and, and be able to meet y'all again, maybe you know October, November, where we can meet back up. Um, that we will also follow up with the, the inventory project that uh, Laura presented on, which is the inventory of physical activity opportunities, uh, and that you can check through, see if maybe we're missing something on the list in your community that needs to get on there. You can reach out to us. Um, but yeah, we, we are super excited that you came. We hope that this was useful for y'all, um, and we're really excited to, to see what comes out of this. So. Um, be looking for an email from us by the end of the week following up and, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day and that it stops snowing. Honestly, that's what I hope for. So. <laughs> hey, hey, Brittany. Yeah. I'm going to put my email in the direct and the thing too. So if anybody decides to, to fill out and try this application and has issues filling it out, I love to help people with logistical issues, filling out applications. <laughs> Yeah, see Mel for the technical questions. I'll help you dream, but yeah. <laughs> She'll help you with the application for sure. Um, <laughs> I need a Mel Young in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you do need, everyone needs a Mel, I say. Oh, Mel, I think you said that privately to me. All right, yes, it's melissa.young at trythiswv.com and you can reach out to her. Don't forget our webpage was trythiswv.org slash mini grants if you want to learn more about our mini grants. And that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day um, and enjoy your week. Bye, everybody. Bye.